Take so, me back. When I was born, obviously, I was adopted from birth. That is not obvious, man. Well, no, not obvious, <laughs> but yeah, I was adopted from birth. And my white family came along, adopted me, and they went through hassle. They went to court, fighting for me, um, because they wanted me to have a black family. So they obviously won the battle. Family gave me the world, they still do to this day. They gave me the world. They treat me like I'm their own, like I, I am. Like I'm one of them. Coming from what I've had and my journey, I just have to remain humble. Obviously, well, 2016, my adopted dad passed away and that really hit me because he was the one that was like keeping me humble, all of that. So I'd say I got my, my humbleness from him and my adopted family, to be honest. Because once that time's gone, and you know this too well, once that time's gone, all you'll do is wish mm. that you'd have done something. 100%. You know? When I have achievements, even little achievements, mum just starts crying. His dad will be so proud of you. It's mad, it's crazy. How does that make you feel? It makes me teary, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, I've just got to keep doing it. Keep doing what I'm doing, because obviously, he's up there watching somewhere. Just got to keep making them proud. Today we have an amazing guest, Tyrone Simpson. Cheers, man. How you doing? I'm good. I really I'm appreciate good. you coming in, professional footballer. Yeah. You're our first professional footballer that we've had on, so I'm I'm absolutely psyched about it. I'm really pleased that you you come to do this. Exciting. And yeah, yeah, Excited. yeah. I mean, you've had. I mean, we we've been friends a while now. We have spoke mm. about like you know your your past and how it progressed you to where you're at today. And yeah. um, I was blown away by it. And I, I think like you've got a wicked story that would allow people to see no matter how hard it's been for you, mm -hmm. you're progressing in your life in a positive yeah. and that's inspirational for me. And this is why I want to get it out there. 100%. So tell us, man, tell us straight from the beginning. I'll take you back. Take so, me back. When I was born, obviously I was adopted from birth. That is not obvious, man. Well, no, not obvious, <laughs> but yeah, I was adopted from birth. Uh, my, mom, my mother, she wasn't able to look after me. She was ill and then didn't have contact with my father. So then I was adopted from birth and then we went through a phase of finding me a family and then I don't know who it is, but they wanted me to have a black family so we didn't have to go through all, uh, all of the nonsense that comes with it. I mean, growing up. What age was it that you become adopted? Or you went into the system? What age was it? I'm pretty sure I was below one. Was below one, early, yeah. Early. Super early. Literally, as soon as I was born, I was up. So then, then my white family came along, adopted me, and they went through hassle. They went to court, fighting for me, um, because they wanted me to have a black family. So they obviously won the battle. And then, not long after that, my sister came along. And then they didn't want to separate us. So then... So uh, so you had a sister with your mum, mm. your true blood mum. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, right. So I just I, I just had to make it clear because I didn't know if you had a sister with your white family. I, we'll get on to that. Yeah, okay, literally. okay, okay. So literally, my sister came along. They didn't want to separate us. So then we were together now. So now the white... I don't know how to explain, but the white family and now have us have us both. Wow, that's that's amazing on behalf of them yeah. and the fact that the system kept you both together as well. Mm. So, what what was the age difference between you and your sister? She's two years below me, so I'm 20 now. She's 18. Wow. Yeah. And and was it them that kept in contact with the system, or did the system then contact them and say, "Look, Doris has a, has a, just had another parents had another sibling." They contacted the family. And they were like, look, we can't separate them. Like, we'll take her. That is absolutely amazing. Yeah. I don't know. You're lucky, know. you know, yeah, that you managed to be able to stay with your sibling even two years prior to her even mm. being born, you know? I know. I know. It's crazy. They fought hard. They fought hard, went to court. And literally, it's funny enough, because I'm playing football with Ipswich, and uh, the court is literally next to Portman Road, which is the scary thing as well. Yeah, I remember you saying, so like your family court that allowed you to be able to be with this white family that they were fighting for yeah. is next to the club that you later on were going to play. Yeah. Mad. I know. 
don't know. So when when you were adopted into a white family, mm-hmm. um, and we don't specifically say black family, white family. Yeah. It's just the understanding of like you know what what's what's your ethnicity background? What's your heritage? Black British. Um, I believe I'm Liberian. And I'm Caribbean, so from uh, Saint Kitts, Saint Kitts and Nevis. Yeah, yeah. So, and and the White family, they're from UK. Yeah, English, anywhere yeah. else. So, like you know, having that must have been like for a lot of people, like looking out at that. Mm. You know, I, my my brother was mixed race. My children are also the same. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, I understand how people look, but to to have a prominent white family with a prominent black son mm. did they they class you as a son yeah 100%. yeah son and then later on a daughter that must have been like you know they must have gone through loads of people saying oh she had an affair do you know what i mean yeah. and stuff like that without even understanding the background mm. some people they don't even care about the background they just see white family with black kids and it's just the way it is you know even at school it was hard because when you'd have parents evening you're coming in with them they're white and everyone's just looking at you like what's going on so it's hard to like explain, but I never really opened up about it. I was just like, it is what it is. Like I never. But looking back now, I feel like it's not a big deal. Like at the end of the day, they're my parents. Like they, I grew up with them. That's all I know. Like literally. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, 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 like when when you've done this, and your si- you and your sister stayed together for always. Yeah, yeah. no separation. You're still no. together now. Yeah, that's absolutely amazing. Yeah, right. So when they when they were going backwards and forwards, it, people must have known, like within the school system anyway, that um, they were parents that adopt. Yeah, yeah. Because my mum adopts kids, and um, she when they go, they already know that she's the adopted parent. You know, okay. so you you kind of like when it comes to the school teachers, but the kids, I can imagine being very different. Like, yeah. what? That's your mum. And they, you know what young young kids are like? Yeah, They're yeah. just so naive. So, yeah. Yeah. How did you deal with a lot of that stuff? Probably not the right way. I feel like I should have owned it a bit more. I didn't In really what own way? It. Like, just tell people, like, my story mm. instead of just hiding away. And, yeah, just hiding Did you hide away because you felt, like, a little bit different, a bit ashamed yeah, or something? Yeah. Yeah, but looking back now, I was thinking like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, yeah, you ain't got to be ashamed of nothing. But it's, uh, unfortunately for us as kids, it's not until we get older that we start to process exactly. life exactly. and just being like, do you know what? This is what it is. Yeah. And I've I've had a good future. Mm. So so has your adopted family, do they, did they have links to football? Like how did you manage to work your way from from – you know, because if you think about it, yeah, a lot of people, and I, the reason why I say this is because my mum's a foster carer, and and I always find with a lot of kids, they automatically hate life, yeah, mm-hmm. because you know they they go through a stage where it's like, why doesn't why didn't my mum love me? Why didn't my dad love yeah. me? Well, why did this? Did you get through a point of that? Not really. I just I just thought it is what it is. There's a reason why I'm here. If she's too ill to look after me, then it's no one's fault, really, is it? Like, that's it, literally. Yeah, that's good, man. Mm. That's good. I think it does help being one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Of not even understanding stuff to start with. So yeah. as you're growing, you automatically put in a position where you it's just normal. Mm. You know, so I, I guess that's a plus on, on your on your front of not having that, like one remembering life before yeah. adoption. Mm. You know, so you. you, you I feel like it would have been in. a lot different, mm. a lot different. Because mm. these, this family gave me the world. They still do to this day. They gave me the world. They treat me like I'm their own. Like I, I am. Like I'm one of them. Yeah, so, you, yeah, you've always spoke highly about them. Yeah. Hundred percent. Every all the times that we've had conversations and that, look, you've even the spoke. brothers, the sisters. Literally, I'm their brother, I'm their sister. I'm that. I don't know anything else. So they have other children? I've got two older brothers. Yeah. Two older sisters, and then obviously my sister. Yeah, and yeah. And then loads of nieces and nephews. All Are you the only one that's football? My older brothers play, but not, not serious, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they already had links to get their children like to play sports? I, from young, I was just a sporty, sporty child. So throughout school, obviously, playing a sport. And then it wasn't, it was football originally. But then I didn't really go anywhere with it. Just playing Sunday league. And then mum was like, oh, look, rugby's great for you. 
you got a great opportunity in rugby. So then I switched from my primary school, and then I went to a private school on a, on a scholarship for rugby. So then I started playing rugby there, doing all sports there, like all the sports under the sun, you name it, I was playing it, even cricket, funnily enough. And then, yeah, didn't look back. And then dad always, always said, like, you'll make it on football, you'll make it with football. And then mum weren't so positive on that side. She was like, oh, go rugby. Because the rugby opportunity was there, like the contract was in front of me. But I've just always had a passion for football. My passion for rugby was never there. I literally just played it because I was good at it. And that's that's me being honest. So, yeah. Yeah, I heard you were pretty good at it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was a winger. Get the balls of Tyrese and it'll do yeah, it'll yeah. some magic, literally. Do you think that comes across sometimes when you're playing um, football? I feel like I'm where I am today because of all the sports I've played in the past. So mm. rugby, obviously, I've got my physicality. And then I used to do athletics as well. So I was fast, done 100 metres. So I got my speed from that and all of them combined. I'll give you a race. Go on. No, mate, I'll die. <laughs> 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 I'll be I'll be on the floor. You'll turn around and be like, "Where's he going? Where, where is he?" I'll, I'll, be, I'll be on the floor within as soon as it says go. I'm down. Oh, yeah, yeah, like for real. I'm I'm bad at it. So like you you you've gone through all the process now of like school and that like. And you, did you do school right? Yeah, I was I was just the average, average, yeah. not high, not low, the average. Yeah, class clown now and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good, man. Did you just get in much trouble? No, nah, not really, not really. Nah. This is good, man. Like, so you, how, how much different do you think your life would have been if, you know, do you ever think about that? If you mm. had been with your um, birth mum and dad, how, how different your life would have been? This would be no offence to them, but I think I'd be doing bad things. Yeah. Because I feel privileged of what I've had so far. Like, when I was playing rugby, that drive across, across England for me, literally. So I was travelling to Leicester, then Bath, like playing everywhere for rugby, and they were just doing it, clocking up the miles, literally just for me. So, yeah. I reckon if I was with the Birth family, they couldn't do that. They couldn't afford to do that. It's nothing on them. It's, it's, Where are they from? As in, what, what town do they live in? Ipswich, from the They live in Ipswich as well, yeah. So, we moved out of Ipswich. So, originally Barningham, we were living in. Then we moved to Bradwell. Then Bradwell to Goulston, which is roughly the same area. Then back to Stowe Market. Wow, that's, yeah. a lot, that's a lot of moving just in the same area, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So you, you would have gone off the rails if you'd have been no disrespect to them and there wasn't any disrespect mm. made there for that. It's just just knowing that what I want to try and get across is like you really are a product of what your parents put into you. Yeah. You know, and it is, I think it's very important that if you show them bad mm. the bad would be the easiest path to travel because it's the one it's the one that you've you're grown into 100%. and and the fact that you've you've had a positive influence has, has brought you to where you are today it's absolutely amazing yeah 100 percent. yeah it's good it's good and and like with with the future of everything to do with you and your family obviously everything's all happy and stuff and you've got you you've got this amazing family from yeah. ipswich as well from Stormark, we're living in Stormark at the minute, but yeah, they grew up in Bury, St Edmunds. Yeah, absolutely amazing. What made them get into it all, into adoption and that? I mean, because you know it, it's absolutely amazing. They they've got their own children and that lot, and they open their hearts and their homes to mm. to to others that that are in need and and really show absolute love. Like I never you... really got into it. I never really spoke to them about it, but they've been doing it for a long. They've done it for a long while, even when. I was in there. They were still doing it. So we had another boy, but he's not with us anymore. And then there was two, also two girls as well, but they're not with us anymore. They've been doing it like way before me. So before was, me. was it a short term for you to start with and then they just loved you and then just carried on long term? No, I think it was all a, always a long term. Always a long term. Man, you, you, you've you been blessed, man, with a blessed real good family, it. you know. Yeah. It's good. Have you ever got back into um, talking to your actual birth parents no i get the odd phone ah, it's weird because my my not my birth mum my mum she's been like a bit skeptical about me being back and around ipswich because they know that they're in ipswich like my birth family are in ipswich and they don't want to 
she doesn't want to take it the wrong way because now I'm doing well. They don't. They she thinks that they're gonna come around like for the finances. Yeah, you know what I mean. But yeah, I've had the odd phone calls. I speak to them now and again, but it's just not the same. Are they still living the same life style? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, it's just not the same. They weren't there from the jump, so like it's hard. I look at my adopted brothers as my brothers now. Yeah, for real, man. Because they've been there since the start. That's good, and 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 you know what it is. You're you're probably one of the most humble guys I've ever come across. Mm when it comes to the position you're in, mm. as in like a superstar, do you know what I mean? Like every, everyone knows who you are. You get, you, you've you got an, a big following, you know, mm. from from people. If, you know, if they seen that you've been tattooed at my shop, they're like, oh my God, what's he like? You know, as a person, blah, blah, blah. I'm always positive on that one. Yeah. Like, how do you deal with that? I just think coming from what I've had and my journey, I just have to remain humble. Obviously, well, 2016, my adopted dad passed away and that really hit me because he was the one that was like keeping me humble, all of that. So I'd say I got my, my humbleness from him and my adopted family, to be honest. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's good, man, because now, now he has passed. That's not the good part, but now he has passed. The good thing is that if you believe that they are looking down on you, yeah. you you've got something to drive for because, you 100%. know, even though the avatar's not here, the spirit still is, yeah. you know, because it lives within you. So if you carry on progressing in a positive like you're doing, you are being seen, mm. you know, so don't look at it as like that was a farewell when you're never going to be seen again because I believe, 100%. like, you know, that we are being viewed from yeah. the other side, wherever Perfect. it may be. Everyone looks up at the sky like no. we're all there. I don't know where we are, but mm -hmm. I believe if you carry on pushing for him yeah. and for yourself, you know, because you've got so many people that look on you. I imagine that being like a, a burden as well as a blessing because if you've done something wrong, you've got so many people that view you in a way that they look up to you yeah. and they see that, they start behaving the way that you do. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. like... It's got to be hard to be like one hundred all the time in yeah. in a in a positive. Like, how 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 are you managing that whole like? You know, we can't go nowhere. Every time you go somewhere, you got people. Yo, can I have my picture taken with you? I like and 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 plus talking about football all the time because that that's not got to do your head in right. Because I, I'm a tattoo artist, yeah. So whenever yeah. I go out anywhere, everyone stops me and goes, "Hey, how much would this cost?" And I'll be eating my dinner or something. And someone, like the waiter, will get their phone out and start mm. scrolling. How much would this cost? And you're, yeah. like, you're like, man, I'm, I'm eating my dinner. Like, yeah. what, what's going on? I think recently people are more respectful about it. But sometimes it's very annoying. Especially you know, if I'm in a rush, like, it's, it's the worst. But And then my brother's like, oh, I bet you love it. Like Sometimes it's nice, of course. But all the time it gets a bit, mm. Mm. Gets a bit annoying. But it's what it is. We wouldn't be anywhere without them, though, yeah, would we? Exactly. Do you know what I mean? The fact that they get recognition from people just goes to show what kind of person you are mm. to, to visual on social medias and in person. Yeah. Because it, when you're on social media, social media portrays a certain person, you know, and mm. your social media, you're always looking fly. You're always with your boys. Like, yeah. you, you've got this almost like like lifestyle that people would really love to have. And then when they meet you, you're as humble as hell. Do you know mm. what I mean? So you are literally what you see on, on, on your social media platform. When I see people out, like, I'd always take time to speak to them or take a picture. I'm not one of them ones that I just, it's like, I always take my time out. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's good because, you know, the fans can link with the person for real. And it's, mm. uh, I think that's very important, you know, yeah. um, as much as it is tiring, you just want to go. Sometimes I walk the long way around so yeah. I don't have to bump into people. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But even a night out would be a nightmare. If you was to stand in a club in Ipswich. Oh, I'll tell you a story. We were in Swindon. Must have won one weekend. I went out in Swindon with my boys. You go in there, they're all screaming like the chants from the football match. Oh, really? you just... Just trying to have a chill one. On the positive side or on yeah. the negative? On the positive. On the positive <clears throat> one. You scored. And then you just you go out that night and they're just all singing. Like, oh, and you just, just want to chill. Like, have a little one. But you can't. Like, as soon as you're seen, it's done. Yeah. It's not a chill one anymore. 
Yeah, so does that make you want to just go off out shopping different towns, go out club in different towns? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it's sometimes. crazy. Yeah, uh, you'll you'll never, and uh, I think that's one of the things that they do when when you don't when you don't become when you become famous, you become to a point where you're like you ain't no longer going to live a silent life. You're mm. out in the media. You're out with the people. Everyone recognizes you. I wouldn't say I'm at that stage yet. No way near that stage yet. Here you are. Mm. Sometimes. I'm Man. not, I'm not, I'm not, I, no, I, I, I'm not I, no superstar. No. I, 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 listen, I deal with people all the time and they, yeah. you're like, you're loved. Mm. Like, you're loved. Do you know what I mean? Like, people will turn around and say to me, oh, you tattooed. And it's like, yeah. And you got a lot of love yeah. here in Ipswich. That's good. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm glad that you don't see it, though. Yeah. Yeah. Even if I did, I still think I'd be the same. Same humble humble boy, like. Do you think that's because you got brought up in a white family? Uh, yeah, I could say that. could say that, yeah. Less, less boring. Yeah. We're boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, how, 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 how did it go with, like... You and, and and your family, like when it comes when it comes to like parties and stuff, that you know was was you invited as kids the same same as what everyone else was 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 the families. Literally, I was one, I was one of them. I was one of them. Yeah, I love that story, man. Yeah. I, 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 one day I'll, I'll meet them. I'm mm. sure, like some somewhere, I'll I'll, I'll meet them somewhere, and yeah. I'll say to them how well they've done. Like, really, I think it's absolutely amazing. What yeah. they say to you about doing a podcast today? To be honest, I didn't say anything. Did you not? She'd probably laugh at me. To be fair, really? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a podcast type. I hate interviews. I hate all of that. Podcasts, I'd say, are a bit different. They're more chill. Mm. Interviews are very scripted. Interviews are a nightmare. I've done interviews before, and like when you got to sit in front of the camera and they turn around and say this, like you're like, you know, they ask you a question, you then say it. You know, yeah. with podcasts, you're right. They are a lot more chilled because yeah. you get to relax. You get to like, it's just like talking. Do you exactly. know what I mean? You just you're just chilling. Exactly. But um, yeah, I think it's absolutely amazing. Uh, you. you You've got such a bright future ahead of you. There's some difficulties, but like, yeah. you know, for sure, with, you know, being in the limelight of what mm. you are, but the future is bright for you and it always will be as long as you stay as humble as what you are. And I, I don't, sure. I don't deny that it's going to, your humbleness is going to change yeah. by any means, by any means necessary. Mm-hmm. And again, sorry for your loss of your, of, of, of your dad, you know, it's, um, must have been really hard for you at that point. That was, especially, it was cancer. Uh, yeah, he had leukemia. I had a cancer in the bone marrow, and I just regret not spending enough time with him because he obviously told us, got us in the hospital, told us all, and then he was trying to be so positive about it. He was saying, "Oh, it's the best cancer you can get." Obviously, there's not a best cancer you can get. But- you are right, though. He was right, though. Yeah, that, that is the best. My, my uncle's got leukemia at the minute, and mm. uh, it is the best one you can get at the minute. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So he's just smiling and all of that. But then his best mate, he's got a best mate called Brian. And like, as soon as we all left, because we thought he'd be fine, because he's a fighter, he's a soldier. Um, as soon as we all left, like, he just broke down in tears, in tears to him. And then he kept he kept a lot in the stage, in that stage, he kept a lot from us. Like, he knew a lot more than what he was letting off just to make us feel stronger. But, yeah, I just feel like I should have spent more time with him. Because I had a close mate called Peter, Peter Christoffi. I was around his, and his mum was looking after me and that. But literally, I felt like I should have been by his side for the whole, the whole time there. Are you angry at him that he didn't tell you the intensity of it? Because he, he, he made it such a brave thing about it that you had more time than what you actually had. Yeah, I am a bit annoyed by it. At the same time, I can see why he done it. Oh, yeah, you can definitely understand why he done it. But mm. you know, as much as people think that when you hold information back on just the seriousness of what it is, mm. you're not giving that person the um, time to be able to let you know that you know what, Dad, I love you, thank you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I appreciate everything. Your body, the way he made it sound, is probably like you could probably tell him tomorrow, or you could tell him next week. Yeah. By that time. You know, cancer moves fast, as you mm. well know. Um, so you didn't get that chance. In the end, I don't think it was the cancer that finished him. It was uh, he got an infection because he was allowed to go out now and again of the hospital. 
I f- we feel like he caught uh, an affection once he was out because obviously he's weak. Like pneumonia or something. Yeah. Mm. Something like that. But yeah. If you could have the chance to have said something to him, for him to understand it, what would you have said? Understand. For him to, for you to say something to him where it was like recapping the thanks. Do you know what I mean? If you could, if you had that chance to say something to him again, what would it be? It's mad because I was a proper daddy boy. Like I'd done everything with him, sitting with him on the sofa. Went to, literally on Thursdays. We went to athletics. We went to football, and then from football we went straight to athletics afterwards. He was always doing the travelling. So I just say thank you for everything you've done, and I'll, I'll pay him back somehow. Pay him back somehow. Pay him back, man, because he's watching. So pay him back in oh, no. in the success that you're doing. I look after my mum as well. Look yeah. after my mum and family. How's she been with it all after? She's She puts on a strong face, but deep down I know. I know when she needs a hug. I don't know when she needs a cuddle. Are you doing that though? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Because a, a lot a lot of time we we become so so lazy to the people that we love. Mm. And we focus so much on showing people that just come and go, friends come and go. Now, yeah. good ones stay, friends come and go, you know. Yeah. And we spend so much time focused on giving all the time and the respect and the love to our f- people that are probably stabbing us in the back and, and talking behind our back that we forget the ones that truly do matter, the ones that got us to where we are. Some days, to be honest, completely honest, some days I do forget and then there's days that hits me. I'm like, I wonder if mum's okay. Like, I'll just go give her a hug. Yeah, you act on that, yeah? Mm. That's good, man. That's good because, you know, sometimes all you need, whether you sit there and you go, I wonder if she's okay, mm. really deep down, it's you that's not okay and you yeah. need the hug. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But in our heads, we use it as like they need the hug, but it ain't, man. It's us. We need it. Do you know what I mean? So we go and do the act of kindness that really make a difference to her or to him or whatever. You know, just taking the time, just that minute, just say like, yo, you good? Mm. Yeah, give us a hug, you know, and and a proper hug, like a two-hand hugger, do you know what I mean? Like, I say this a few times in some of my podcasts, it's really important sometimes that physical touch is way better than just a text, you know, and people are forgetting that. They send a text because they can't bother to jump in the car and go around, but they'll happily sit on the computer and, you know, talk to their friend across the other side of the world, no problem. Because once that time's gone, and you know this too well, once that time's gone, all you'll do is wish mm. that you'd have done something. Hundred percent. You know. Yeah. You know it's the, that that's the hard part about it, and and it, you know, and not letting it beat you up so much that it affects you in a, in a physical way when it comes to your future self. You know, because I, I try and live life with no regrets. Yeah. And even if that means I have to hurt someone or hurt myself to be able to move the negative past to carry on with the positive because you can't take everyone with you. You really can't. They've got to want it as much as you do. But you've always got to sit there and think to yourself, the only way I'm going to impress people is by living myself the way that I need to to be able to progress to levels that would make them look upon you to do the same thing 100%. because you're in the eye. Do you know what I mean? People yeah. are looking at you to, for the, for your next move, whatever mm. you're doing, whatever you're wearing, however you talk, how, what music you listen to, yeah. all of that is being looked on by young people and that's influencing them more than what you could even. Sometimes that doesn't hit me. Obviously there's people out there that are watching me. Not wants to be me, but are inspired Man, they by want, me. They, uh, exactly. An inspiration is a directional goal for them to change their way yeah. of being you. Like, man, I used to be like, I want to be the Incredible Hulk. Mm. So what do you do? If I want to be the Incredible Hulk, I've got to go and smash that car up. I've got yeah. to be like raging up, trying to knock down houses and stuff. Like, mm. we know that ain't no goal to be. And it's like, as far as I'm concerned, I didn't realize that he wasn't a superhero that's yeah. been animated. I thought he was the real deal, you know, when mm. Louis, Louis Frigno, the, you know, the muscle dude, yeah, yeah, he yeah, played yeah. Hulk way back when I was a dinosaur, you know, like he, he, he was the one. So he was a real person. I wanted to be that person. So mm. I was angry. I was this, I was that. Yeah. But like you, people look at you like I looked at the Hulk, you know, mm. and, and you know, the fact that 
you don't let you you don't really know that mm. yeah because you feel like you haven't got to the stage where you're you're at where people wouldn't notice you like yeah. um some of the mega mega stars you know mm. but you are a mega no matter what level you are in life if someone is not at their goals that they want to be and you're there yeah. it doesn't matter what stage you are in life whether you're on a big screen in hollywood or whether you're playing and holding up the big cup what's it called Champions League. The Champions League Cup. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. Yeah. Because even if you're playing Sunday League somewhere, yeah, and all the people that are standing around the outside, whether you've got a nine-to-five job as a, uh, you pick up poo or, or, or you clean the streets, yeah. you get down in the sewers or whatever, and you play in the Sunday League, all them people that are around the outside, they're giving you something, yeah, and that's a piece of their life because the time that they're putting there, they'd never get that back again. No. So them standing there, and this is how you got to look at it, right? All these people that come to see you has given them something, has given you something that will never be able to get ever again. Yeah. And that's time. They've given you a piece of their life, yeah, that they will never get back again. Yeah. And they've given that to you. You know, so think about that, man. People have actually given you their life to come and see you. Yeah. It's mad, isn't it? Deep in it now. Deep in it now. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, I've i never ever thought about that. Like when someone comes and gets a tattoo or anything, it wasn't until I lost, so I lost my brother. I opened my eyes up many, many ways. Like mm. so many ways that I think to myself, I've never ever viewed stuff the way I view stuff. And then I meet people and I, I meet people and they give me a little bit of information. I'm like, God, I never really thought about that. And it opens up my mind. But I'm, you see me, I'm a deep thinker. Yeah. I'm a deep thinker and I get real deep in the stuff, you know. Yeah. And now that I appreciate what people give me, uh, I might not turn around and say, like, you know, I appreciate you being around or whatever. But I think about, like, I've just took a piece of their life and they've, they've given that to me. Yeah. Mm. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. When you lost your brother, how were you? Do you... Did you talk to people about it or did you keep it to yourself? Are you in a sense of, are you asking me in a sense of like, because you've lost your... When I lost my when I lost my dad, I kept everything to myself. Mm -hmm. Everyone asking, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Even family members, I kept it all to myself. Now and again, I have a cry, but I just kept it in. Did you let it out or did you? It was for me, and I, 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 you know, the truth is, I cried, it was like a screaming cry, yeah? When I found out the news, I was so, it was really hard for me because my brother was murdered. Yeah. And if he would have been took from an illness, it would have prepared me, yeah? yeah? And, you, you, you know, even the same for you, even though it happened, you was kind of prepared it was going to happen, but you were shocked at the time it took, right? Yeah. But for me, it was instant. My brother was there, and then I get a phone call saying he's dead. Do you know what I mean? So, so for me, when I lost my brother, my cry hasn't happened. And it's not because I don't feel no love for my brother because I love my brother deeply. It's mm. because I had emotional, I was emotionally shocked Yeah. because I was angry. Mm. You know, my, my anger come which overtook my tears. Yeah. So when I lost my brother, I wanted to cry, but because I was so angry, I just screamed. Yeah. And I was like, ah! and I, like, I really went at it to the point where I, I screamed for so long that my oxygen had, was leaving my body and I should have been breathing back in. Yeah. And I started like, I started going off because I nearly passed out. I was screaming that much, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and for me, once I'd got that scream out, something else took over where I then had to find the people that killed my brother. Mm. Now this happened for four years. Yeah. Yeah. For four years, I'd gone through this confused, such a confused stage where I didn't know how to cry. I didn't know how to grieve. I didn't know, I didn't know what I was doing because I lost my brother. I tried to find the people to kill him. I had to keep my family together. My mum's on suicide watch. My dad had a stroke. Yeah. yeah. I, um, my sisters are falling apart. So I'm trying to keep everyone together. I'm then arranging a funeral because my mum's incapable of doing it because she's lost. Yeah. yeah. Like absolutely lost. 
on the funeral, I'm dealing with the police. With the police, I've then got caught. Yeah. And then I've got caught. And then once they've gone to jail, I can then kind of slowly put that lot aside. And then from there, try and help rebuild my family. It wasn't until four years in that I realized that I need, I needed to do something to stop me. And I'm still afraid of breaking now. Like yeah. if I, if I broke, I've, my family would die. Mm. They would die inside, just completely ruined, you know? So like for me, I had to put things in place. So I put a charity in play and I set up a charity with, with my friend, Jamie, the cameraman who's on there now. Yeah. Um, I, put, I put the charity together to try and keep myself occupied. And then, and then I then set up the podcast, but the only way I could set up the podcast was if I told my story. Yeah. Now, four years in, it took me four years to be able to talk about it. And I could only do it on my own yeah. on an iPhone in my van mm. and I just spilled it all out and anyone that's watching this if you if you haven't seen it you could go on the beginning of my YouTube channel right down to the very beginning you got part one part two but and it goes through yeah. the stages of how I felt mm -hmm. and that was a massive thing for me because it was the first time I'd ever spoke about it because I don't speak I never spoke no. and it empowered me to a point where I was like do you know what it takes a bigger person to speak. Being a man, you feel like you can't, you can't, you're not allowed to talk about it because you're supposed to be a man. You're supposed to be a geezer. You're supposed to be the rock, mm. but you ain't man. You're human, Exactly. you know, and as much as you try and tell people you're okay, visibly you can see you're not, mm -hmm. and that will allow worry on the people that really do love and care for you because it's the people that don't care for you that doesn't see that you're struggling. Yeah, 100%. So if someone turns around and say, you're okay, I know that you're probably saying it, you're okay, because you're guarding them from feeling worse than what they already do themselves. Mm -hmm. But it's important for you with yourself and your progression in a positive manner that you do speak out and you do speak about it because like if you don't, it will consume you in such a way that eventually when you do break, you won't just break, you'll explode. Yeah. You know, uh, have you, have you spoke to anyone since? No, they were talking about, mum was talking about getting a counsellor, but I never, never, never really wanted so to. So for me, for my family, I got them all a counsellor mm -hmm. and it was okay for a while. And then you find yourself going over the same stuff. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So for me, it wasn't good that I, I never saw a counsellor because I didn't feel like it would have benefited me because no, the way not. that I think mm. is not the same way that my sisters and my mum and that lot think because they're happy to unload. Yeah. Well, I've never done that before. Exactly so for me, thing. I had to figure out a way of how, how I could speak about it. Now a loss for you is is different to my loss yeah. but the feeling is still the same because mm -hmm. we feel like as men we can't talk yeah. as men we're not allowed to show emotion mm -hmm. as men in the limelight we're not allowed to break because it will affect our career it will affect the way people view us and it, it it's not it's not until that you fully let go and you do break in a way that's manageable yeah because yeah? you can do that right now you can manage your breakdown. Yeah. Yeah. Where if you leave it, you won't be able to manage it because no. it's visible. Your anger comes from it, you know, just regret, depression, like all of that stuff all builds up at once and you'll mm. find yourself in a position where you will not be, not be in a good place because of it. Mm. So it's very important to find out your direction of how you would be able to manage talking about, yeah. you know, your loss because, you know, if if for you speaking to a counsellor is no good, no. finding someone you could speak to, or even blogging about it, yeah, you know, blogging about a loss because you're not alone on this matter. No. You're really not alone, and you'll be surprised how much strangers will connect with you, yeah, in a sense that you will be like, wow, because like I I felt alone, man, for a long time, mm. and. I can see that you're struggling with the loss because you got to remember your loss is great because it was your second chance of your first chance. Do you understand? Like 
these people took you in and they didn't have to. They gave you a life and they didn't have to. They no. gave you time and they didn't have to. You know, you're a black kid in a white family. They didn't have to do that. No. They didn't have to fight for you. And you know that these people gave you so much and you, you're giving them back by just the man that you are today. But you might not feel like you've done enough for them, but just turning out good mm. is enough reward for any parent, you know? Literally, when I have achievements, even little achievements, mum just starts crying. Says, Dad will be so proud of you. It's mad. It's crazy. How does that make you feel? It makes me teary. But at the same time, I'm like, yeah, I've just got to keep doing it. Keep doing what I'm doing. Because obviously, he's up there watching somewhere. Just got to keep making them proud. So how are you dealing with it all? I don't know. I don't know. This is the first time speaking about it in, I'd say, a long while. Obviously, I speak to my brothers and sisters about it. I'd say that's that's a way of dealing with it. And then when I go to the the crematorium, when I speak to him, I speak to he's not there. His ashes are at home, but his plaque's there. So it's weird I speak to him there. I couldn't go to the crem. Yeah. I couldn't for me and and this is how we manage things differently as humans, you know, not just we we're two different, you're white, I'm black, whatever, do you know what I mean? Not like or the other way around. Mm. But like for me, death is too final for me. Yeah. So going to a crematorium, going to a grave, if you're if you're buried, that's mm. too final for me. Yeah. Me, I try and find the memory. Do you know what I mean? In the music. Yeah. The the laughter, the certain clothes or the spot where we had the most time. Like Dean was always standing out the front of my shop. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So <laughs> I put a bench there. You've seen the bench outside. Yeah, yeah. I put a bench there. You've seen the lamppost. It's full of flowers. That's my mum's doing. Yeah. You know, even for me, I still think that's too much, you know, because it's too final that he's dead. And I don't want to think of him as he's dead because here and here, he mm. still lives. Yeah. So if I, if, I, if I look at that as in, like, he's dead, he's gone. Now, I... I got my mum to release the plaque from the crematorium and have that in a place where he felt comfortable. Yeah. Um, so mum stuck it in the back garden. I don't know why she stuck it in the back garden. I don't know. But for her, yeah. it was better for her to go there because every time my mum went to the crematorium, she come away just destroyed again. Everything mm. that I built up, she'd go down the crematorium on a Thursday and she was gone again, mate. Yeah. And I had to build her up for three days, like, come on, you got this, Ram. Like, she'd ring me up and she's, like, crying and stuff. And, and I, I just think to myself, Mum, you've got to move him from there. He wasn't, he wasn't there. He, he doesn't belong there. You have to move him. But if that's your sanctuary and that's your peace, then, then it's really, really good that you've got a place. Mm. But if that reminds you that he's dead, then you need to find a place where you can keep him alive. Yeah. I feel like when, with mum, I can go back to Goulston and I'll be a fine, but she cannot go anywhere near there because it'll just bring back so many memories. So obviously we live near the beach. So anything to do with, not even a beach, but anything to do with Goulston, she can't go anywhere near there. Goulston or Yarmouth, it just brings back so many memories. But yeah, I feel like I need to, I need to find a way of doing that because one day if I don't do that, it'll hit me hard. Mm. But yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's always like listen we live in this world to create a legacy mm -hmm. for your dad yeah. all them miles that he travelled all them times on the sofa where you was a daddy's boy mm. you're his legacy Yeah, you understand what I'm saying mm. and that's deep that's that's emotional and that's the truth man like yeah. his legacy was left with you like you're what's left of him, along with his other sons and mm. his daughters. But all that time that he put into you was for a reason. And that was for him to still be here after he's gone. Mm. So it's now down to you. Even now they all say I was his favourite brother. We all have a joke <laughs> about it, saying I was the favourite son. And I'm not even blood, like, but I still somehow the favourite. 
Hell it's mad how you can have a connection with a child. You don't have to be blood to be a, a son or, or you don't have to be blood to be a dad, mm. you know? And I, I think that's very important that people understand that adoption, stepkids, um, broken relationships have then formed into new relationships. You know what I mean? That, you know, you might not be blood, but them children definitely look up to you like you're their dad or mum. Yeah. So I think it's important to leave what your dad has left behind with you yeah you know a well-mannered man that's got ambition and a skill mm -hmm. that it take him to levels beyond your dad's wildest dreams yeah and that's how you've got to thank him you've got to thank him by carrying on doing what you're doing to be able to progress yourself to to levels that it would make the sun come out because you know we we choose to ignore signs in life as just like ah, oh, it's whatever in it but yeah when you're struggling, at some point, there might be a bird that you focused on. Not a bird as in a bird, like a girl. I'm mm. on about a bird. Like for me, when my brother died, magpies were just everywhere. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter where I was. But for my mum, it was robins. Mm. For my sister, it was feathers. Mm. Do you understand? We focus on these things and it's like, oh, yeah, he's here. Or, or you'll be sitting there and a song will come on and you'll be like, and especially if you're feeling a bit down and then a song will come on, you're like, was that was that you or I've for been us for us when we have get a family get together on obviously the day he died, his birthday, Father's Day, and every time a feather seems to pop up, like every single time, so strange. Do you keep them? Pardon? Do you keep them? What the feathers? No, my sister does. She puts them all in the back of her phone case. No. Her phone case has got more feathers than the bird that dropped it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like she, there's there's like loads, absolutely loads. Mm. But you know, it's whatever it is that you need to believe that they're there around you. It's not it's not a myth because listen, they're sending you signs for a reason. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think it's important that you do express out, like express yourself emotionally to either anyone in your family or to a stranger, whether it be a therapist or whether it be yeah. to you blogging this and mm -hmm. putting it online, because you got to remember you're in, you're in a position where you can inspire others to do and to cope in a more positive way. Mm. If you was to do something like that, 100%. you know, for me was talking into a phone. That was my therapy. Yeah. And then from that, I've got this channel. You know, things progress in a way where you would never thought it would have happened. And that, has it got anything to do with my brother as why I'm doing this? Or is it just pure hard work while I'm doing this? But my drive for him and his legacy yeah. will carry on through this channel, you know. And, and because of that, I get to meet people like yourself that are struggling to do just that. Like live day by day because mm. something inside you is burning up that much. And the reason for that is men don't talk. No, not at all. Not at all. So you just got to manage it in a, in, a, in a way like, you know, because my loss and your loss is very different, but we're, we're the same. same. Yeah, literally. So where do you take yourself with that then? So uh, I think we should move on to something more positive. To <laughs> <laughs> but you got to promise you're going to talk about it though. No, I will. Yeah, I'll do something about it, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, good, good. So, you looking to stick around Ipswich? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm getting to the age now where I don't need to be close to a family. I know who I've got on my side, and I know wherever I'll be, they'll they'll make the effort to come down and see me. So, yeah. Yeah, you got big things for future, and I know you can't talk too much on that. Mm. Um, you know, just through you know career wise and stuff you you got you got things that you got to do but um I, i'm i'm really blessed to have you as a friend yeah i'm blessed to have you on my channel and um to, 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 to anyone out there that does look upon this podcast you know because we we've hit some deep things we've we spoke adoption yeah we spoke you know black families white families we spoke like growing up in the area yeah we've done um, you know the loss of your, your your dad, rest in peace. You know, and 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 managing your expectations with how you should or or you shouldn't feel. You know, yeah. Um, and you know, if you ever want to talk, I'm always here for you. I know that. Um, on on the positive note is um, your future is great. 
It yeah. really is. And, you, you know, you like I said, right away throughout this, you're as humble as hell and I absolutely love that about you. And I'm glad to call you a friend, you know. And uh, I, I wish you all the best for the future. And like, is there anything you want to add to? No, literally hit no on the head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you so if, if any kids are out there or any people that are out there watching this to do with, you know, being a fan of yours or just talking about keeping things in, what would you say? First of all, I'd say don't let anyone tell you you can't do something. Even if even if it's your parents or your closest friends, just keep if you believe in yourself, you can do it. You can you can achieve whatever. And then I would also say if you're struggling to open up, just find different strategies to help yourself open up. Cause in the long run it will it will benefit you and the people around you because you don't want to be hurting the people around you now in the future and yeah well said man yeah i appreciate you man thank you so much nah man i appreciate you no worries